Salutations, my Fallout lovers. It is Maddie here today bringing you the most in-depth analysis of the Fallout 4 gameplay trailer that we got at E3 2015. Today, you're going to be learning a lot about Fallout 4 that you may have missed, so I kindly ask that you share this video because it took me forever to make, and since I know this is going to be a long one, let's get straight into it. Here we get our first look at what seems to be some brand new armor. I'm not sure what to identify it as. It seems like some sort of tribal wear on top of a raincoat. I'm not sure exactly what this is. But anyways, we can also identify that the character is holding a lead pipe, so that's a returning melee weapon. We can also get our first look at the HUD on the bottom of the screen. It appears that we are going to be having our map HUD on the bottom middle of our screen. Now we see the return of the motorcycle helmet as well as leather armor. It has a very nice and slick look to it. It appears that the protagonist is now holding a laser pistol. Now we see the protagonist holding another brand new weapon. It's very hard to identify what these brand new weapons are because of Bethesda's new customization system where there's so many different upgrades and paths you can take to change your gun. So it's quite hard to identify which gun is which. This looks like an assault rifle of some form. You can see the clip on the bottom of the gun. But also I want to focus on the armor he's wearing. It looks like a weird mixture between the radiation suit as well as the space suit from Mothership Zeta. It could be an updated form of the radiation suit though that would be my personal guess. Well, hello there. Now we're getting our first look at the sexy sleepwear in Fallout 4. Also, the protagonist is now holding a sledgehammer, which will be returning in Fallout 4. And finally, we're seeing the protagonist now with a bear helmet on. Very funny, getting some Dead Rising 3 vibes here. He's also wearing a pre-war suit. And finally, the massive gun in his hand is the return of the Gatling gun. And oh my, is it sexy looking. It looks really meaty, really nice and updated. It looks like how the Gatling gun should look and feel. Powerful. Now we get a look at the brand new features in the VAT system. It seems that this critical bar fills up as you use VATs more and more, and then you can execute criticals to do extra damage. I'd also like to focus on the top of the screen as we see a new creature is joining us here in Fallout 4, Bloodbug. We will get to see this thing up close and personal later in the trailer. Now we're seeing smack dab in the middle of the screen are brand new crosshairs, which are, well, actual crosshairs. I know that's kind of weird to point out, but in Fallout we all expected that normal weird rectangle in the center of our screen. Well, no more. Fallout is more of a shooter now. I'd also like to point out on the bottom right corner of the screen the new ammo counter we have. It's a little different from before, but I like the change. And now it appears we have entered the Museum of Freedom. I did a little research online and could not find any real life comparisons. Also, we see what looks like a brand new weapon. We see the sole survivor cranking what looks like a laser rifle, which has been turned into a railgun. Now, why do I say it's a laser rifle? Well, once we get a look at the side profile, I feel you guys will agree with me, but it appears this is a weapon that has been upgraded heavily into something completely different, which I absolutely adore in this game. And here's that side profile I was talking about. Now, some may disagree, and that's totally understandable, but I feel like if you take a look at the laser rifle side by side with this new rifle the Soul Survivor is holding, I feel like the comparison is fair. It looks like a little rail was added to the end to kind of turn this into a sniper rifle, and that the little crank thing was used to reload this energy charge. That's kind of what I'm getting out of it. Now, it could not be an upgraded energy gun. It could be something completely different, but it's just a little side by side comparison I noticed. Remember, like I said, the new weapon customization system does make it difficult to fully identify what each weapon is, but I feel like this is definitely an upgraded laser rifle. Anyways, I'd also like to point out what's happening on the Soul Survivor. As you can see, he has his vault jumpsuit on, but what's above it? You see he has elbow pads, he has armor on above this, he has the big chest armor over his jumpsuit. This is almost taking a page out of Morrowind for Bethesda here, which is absolutely awesome with this piece by piece customization that you're going to be wearing clothes under your armor. After seeing the Soul Survivor light up one raider enemy with what looked like an SMG, we now get a good look at what the new VATS is going to be. As you'll see, it runs in real time rather than fully pausing your game. You'll see the enemy slowly run at the Soul Survivor, which is very different because now we can't just use it as a pause and pick. We have to do these choices on the fly. We also see that something's new. Level? What? There's levels mentioned in this now? That's kind of crazy because now maybe perhaps certain areas may be too high of a level for you to travel into. It also mentions the raiders 
armor level as well as I'm not sure what that charge level could stand for. Perhaps it means stamina or something. Perhaps enemies have a vats they can use on you. I'm not quite sure. I'm just thinking outside the box. We also noticed that his name is Raider Scum. So it seems that uh, we're going to see lots of different types of raiders rather than just raiders. Here we see a good attention to detail on the gore. Look at this arm that's been destroyed bit by bit. You can see the bones sticking out on this arm. Absolutely disgusting. I just had to highlight this. We also see the Raider Scums wearing a full mask or some form and some new type of armor that looks like it was just made out of a fence. I really like this take because it feels like now the wasteland is believable. People shouldn't be running around with full pieces of armor. This is the armor they should be wearing and I love the new stance Bethesda is taking. Here we're getting our first look at Fallout 4's Yao Gwai. I really like the take on this one too. It's a lot more scary looking. And we also seem to see a very decked out pipe rifle perhaps. It seems to be semi-automatic, but it also has once again the little handle rotating for each shot it takes. And also the clip on the side. Not too sure what this is, but it's definitely a very customized weapon. Here we see the soul survivors stumble upon a battle between a sentry bot and some raiders. Now what's special about this is that they're still fighting each other even though the soul survivors standing next to each other. If you played Fallout quite a bit you know that quite often factions don't fight each other and when you show up they all join together and kill you. So I find it interesting that even though the soul survivors standing right near them they're not all shifting their fire towards him they're continuing the battle that was started beforehand. I'd also like to focus on the weapon the soul survivors holding. It seems to be a different version of a gun we saw earlier in the trailer. As you can see in this clip here, it seems to be more of an SMG, very similar stock to it, but then in this clip, the one that we were just analyzing, we see a scope on top, a new reload clip on the bottom, as well as a new barrel for the gun to turn it into kind of a sniper of sorts. Now we're seeing something that will be familiar to us PC players, but for console players who never got to experience the impact mod, if you look very closely on the left on the wall, bullet holes. That's pretty cool and some attention to detail, figured it's something I'd point out. In this port area, which looks fucking sweet by the way, I'd like to point out that when the soul survivor goes to snipe this poor little soul, look at that on the bottom, a hold breath option, something that is new to Fallout. We're able to hold our breath while sniping enemies, which I find a very useful feature, so thank you Bethesda. In this clip here, we see two highly requested features for Fallout 4 be confirmed. The first one being hit markers. In Fallout 3 New Vegas, it was quite often that you'd have difficulty being able to tell whether or not you actually shot the enemy. So it's good to see that hit markers will be in Fallout 4. What's even better to see is the ability to actually melee enemies with your gun out. This was a highly requested feature, as I said, and a lot of people in Fallout 3 New Vegas did not like the fact that you had to switch to a melee weapon, then attack them, and then take your gun back out. So it's nice to see that all those systems have now been integrated together. And now it is confirmed that we will be getting a return of the Super Mutant Behemoth, which has me very happy. I wonder if they're going to include more, considering the world is going to be considerably bigger than Fallout 3. I'm sure it will. And we also get a look at an upgraded plasma rifle, which seems to be shooting at a much higher rate and also has a red dot on it. Very nice stuff. In this clip we get a surprising amount. The first thing we notice is obviously the Meyer Lurk Queen. We've faced Meyer Lurks before but now we get to see the leader of them all. Now is it the leader of a nest or a leader of all of them? Who knows but I'm going to go with nest. We'll see in the full game. We also see an upgraded version of the laser pistol. Just a red dot sight on it but still pretty cool. But mainly what I want to focus on is on the bottom left corner of the screen. As you can see the radiation bar has now been integrated into the HP bar. I also noticed that the radiation increased right right when our player got hit, so now enemies are able to leech off radiation onto us, which I think is quite interesting. Anyways, I feel like how this will work is that the radiation will cover over the health bar, and if the health bar gets full of this red radiation bar, then perhaps that's when we'll die. Stopping right here, we get a look at one important thing and one little thing. The little thing is the bat. That bat is covered in barbed wire, obviously a weapon upgrade, but one worth highlighting because it's freaking awesome. What I want to highlight though mainly is when the soul survivor strikes this raider boss with the bat, you'll see physics played into it. Instead of the body just kind of lumping over or exploding with gore like they have in previous Fallout games and Elder Scrolls games, it seems that he kind of moves with the way the bat at the speed the bat is coming at his head and he drops really 
realistically, something we've actually never seen in a Fall game or a Bethesda game in general. Now we get into the juicy stuff. Here we're seeing a Synth Assaulter, our first android. Awesome stuff, but shouldn't come as much of a surprise based off of being set in Boston, as well as the Institute playing a part in this game. But what I want to focus on here is, number one, the combat shotgun. Yes, it's back. I am so happy about that. But number two, the particle effects. If you notice, when the Soul Survivor shot this Synth Assaulter, you saw pieces of the robot fly off and into the air and it brought this impact, this believable killing effect that you're actually damaging this enemy. A smart attention to detail by Bethesda that I really, really like. Now Bethesda's just giving the fat man some love. Obviously every Fallout fan was able to identify this, but I just had to point it out so I could talk about the fat man. Watch him nuke the hell out of a raider veteran. Hell yeah! Here we get a look at a brand new upgrade to Fallout 4, which is a bayonet on the end of a shotgun. Are you serious, Bethesda? Oh my gosh. But more importantly, on the top right corner, we have a new icon to identify when our player is crippled. So I find this interesting because it's quite different from the original one. And it's very hard to tell which body parts are crippled. Is it his arm and legs or is it just letting you know you're crippled and then you go inside your pit boy and repair the specific parts? In time, we shall find out. Rolling on up to easily the most interesting section of the trailer, here we are seeing some new third person shooting mechanics. Like I said, Fallout seems to be more of a shooter now where we have the reticle, we have the recoil, but more importantly, it seems the player, even though they are shooting, are able to still throw a grenade. Now that shows that there is going to be a grenade hotkey of some form, something that Fallout fans have been prying for. Originally in previous Fallout games, you had to actually equip the grenade and then throw it. There were hotkeys in previous Fallout games, but you get what I'm saying. Anyways, I'd also like to highlight that on the bottom of the map, we see that there are enemies in front of us, but then they tell us if they're above us or below us. A nice new feature that will allow us to easily find our enemies. And finally, the most interesting part is that if you see to the left of our protagonist, we have a super mutant companion, perhaps. Now, this could be a story mission and you're just helping out a super mutant, but I find it quite interesting that this super mutant is shooting at other super mutants with you. Perhaps this is a companion, I'm not quite sure, but easily the most intriguing part of this trailer in my opinion. Whoa now, what is this destructible environment Bethesda? You are spoiling us now. This is something Fallout fans have absolutely wanted and it's awesome that it's here in a minor fashion, not out of Battlefield where you can absolutely level buildings and whatnot. I think this small amount of destruction is cool and will prevent enemies from cowering behind cover because now I can just rip through it or blow it up. In this bit here, we see the Rad Scorpion come from underground and ambush us. This gives these enemies an incredible element of surprise. We also see a upgraded laser rifle, which seems to highly increase the rate of fire. Once again, the upgraded weapons at work. And then finally, on the bottom left, we see a different Rad symbol. I'm not sure exactly what's going on with the radiation system, but it's quite different from the HP. Here we're seeing what may be a pleasant surprise to a lot of Fallout fans, which is the fact that you actually have to physically enter this power armor. Power armor is now a believable thing because it's actually giant armor that will, in fact, protect you, unlike in previous Fallout games where you simply equipped it. I like this different change of pace by Bethesda where they like you to step into this and use your own customized, bulked out armor to take on these much tougher creatures. Upon entering the power armor, we see a load of brand new HUD, an HP meter, RADs, as well as a map, a spot meter, and an AP meter. But most importantly, on the left hand side, we see what looks like an armor status type of checkup thing, where perhaps as you take damage, you have to go back to the garage and repair your armor. Also, scary deathclaw. We all know that. Maddie, why don't you stop this clip? It's just a kill cam, man. Uh-uh, you're not Maddie. You don't have my eyes, because I see on the top left shoulder of this power armor, a torchlight, which I think is a cool little feature.
What's important about this clip is we're getting a look at what happens if you fuck with a death claw now without your power armor, and we get a look at something brand new to fall, which is death animations. This death claw picks you up, extracts its claws, and stabs you brutally and kills you off. I think this is an awesome feature, but most importantly, I am now more terrified of death claws. Based on the fact we see a woman bashing a raider's head in and a man standing outside a cage and she's celebrating her victory, it seems that we're going to have some type of arena mode in Fallout 4. Let's go, time to earn some caps for killing people. Well now, what is this? This is crazy, some lore breaking stuff. Dog Meat is not a blue healer in Fallout 4. Now perhaps I could be incorrect and you can just name your dog because previously during the Fallout 4 reveal, the dog's name was, well, just Dog. Now it's called Dog Meat, so I'm gonna assume you can actually name it on your own, but it's interesting that Bethesda is referring to it as Dog Meat. Ooh, the feral ghoul looking as weak as ever as our protagonist that likes him the hell up. But most importantly, what I want to focus on once again is the physics. As the player lights up this feral ghoul, you'll see them react to the bolts and kind of shake their shoulders left and right, stumble backwards. It feels impactful. It feels like you're actually doing damage now. And as if this explosion was fate to show us this brand new feature, it appears that you will no longer have to press A to loot an enemy, in fact just looking at them is enough to open up what they're holding that you can take from them. As we can see as this feral ghoul reaver flies by the screen, the cursor hovers over him for just enough time for us to see that we're able to loot this guy, but it's clear enough that based off the explosion, the fact that the player is reloading, that they couldn't have initiated any type of looting feature. So it seems that looking at them just brings up a loot menu. Remember how I promised earlier in the trailer the blood bug would return? Well, here it is. This is a good look at it. It appears to be a mutated mosquito of the sorts, and based off the way it's attacking you, I can confidently say this is going to be the Cazador of Fallout 4, so to say. That equivalent of just absolute misery whenever you run into it. I'd also like to focus on the fact that it's yet another death animation for the player as the blood bug grabs your shoulders and puts its needle in you. And perhaps it wasn't a death animation, as we see here the players interacting back and pushing the blood bug off of them. Is there a way to counter that's hopefully not a QTE of some form? Perhaps if we go back to the death claw death animation, was there a way to escape that in some way? I guess we'll find out later on in the development of this game, but I figured it was something worth pointing out. More physics, more rain, 10 out of 10 Bethesda, yes! You want to talk about a big surprise? How about being able to call in your own vertebrate with a flare? Who knows if there's fast travel returning now considering you're going to be able to use this to travel around. I find it a quite interesting feature and one that was definitely unexpected on my behalf. You want to talk about an even bigger surprise? How about being able to man the turret in your own vertebrate? Oh my goodness. But what I want to really focus on instead of that is the fact that you can actually pick wherever you want to land by pressing A. What's very important to highlight about that is that I feel that further supports the fact that there won't be fast travel in this game, considering you can just pick to land wherever you want. Also, it seems you can jump out whenever you want, so I know this is a crazy thought, but are parachutes confirmed, Bethesda? Please. Now we're getting a look at what is the Junk Jet, which is essentially the Fallout 4 version of the Rocket Launcher. What this does is allows you to take any junk items that you have in your inventory and use it as ammunition. So essentially, as you'll see next in the clip, you'll see the protagonist shoot a person's head off with a teddy bear. It's awesome. Here we get a look at some really juicy stuff. First off, we see the player directly impact a Brotherhood Initiate with a missile, and he doesn't die. In fact, you only see pieces of his armor fall off, which is more attention to detail, but also hammers home the fact that this power armor is indeed powerful armor. I know that sounds crazy, but normally if we were wearing power armor in Fallout 3 or New Vegas, we'd just ragged all over the place, but now it seems you can take these severe damage type of attacks. I'd also like to focus on the fact that the Brotherhood is back in Fallout 4 and will be playing a part in this game in some way or form. A lot of people were questioning it, especially since in the reveal trailer, when we 
were seeing power armor this shot specifically we didn't see the brotherhood of steel logo on the shoulder like it usually is so it's something worth pointing out that they're there it's also quite interesting that the protagonist is attacking the brotherhood and not working with them Really, Bethesda, like, I can't take it. My heart just exploded when I saw this. Jetpacks in Fallout 4. Oh, yes. But let's focus on some of the little details here. As we can see, when you start using your jetpack on the bottom right, your action points begin to decrease. So now we know that that's how this type of mechanic runs. And in one of the more shocking moments in the trailer, we see an airship from the Brotherhood of Steel crashing down into the open world. Absolutely crazy stuff. But I want to focus on the fact that, as you can see here, this is the Brotherhood of Steel insignia. It's very hard to see amongst the flames, but it's enough to distinguish the wing and the sword, as well as the gear. I'm finding it very interesting that we're seeing a lot of death of the Brotherhood of Steel. And then why is this player taking down their airship? More Brotherhood of Steel death, but most importantly, we are about to see the player take down a vertebrate, which is very cool and brand new to Fallout. Obviously a feature that stuck out to all of us here, but it's awesome to see that there's going to be this extra sense of danger as you are ambushed by vertebrates, and instead of them just dropping off troops and having them attack you, you're actually going to have to destroy the vertebrate yourself. And now we get a real homage to Fallout 3 as we see a detonator on the table right in front of the player and then a giant explosion happening in the far off distance. So yes, please, I was so hoping there'd be a quest like this in Fallout 4. I'm so happy to see one of such return. We also see on the left side of the screen, which looks like Diamond City, I'm going to assume because it resembles quite a bit a baseball park. And that, ladies and gentlemen, will conclude my analysis of the Fallout 4 gameplay trailer we received at E3 2015. Did I miss anything? Let me know in the comments section down below with your thoughts. As always, I beg you to share this video. It took me ages to make. Every Fallout lover should be here checking this out, so let them know. Other than that, I appreciate your support, and here's to many more Fallout 4 videos. Let the countdown to November begin. I'll catch you guys later. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.